It's Clint Coons here, and we're going to talk about anonymity today, and I'm going to teach you how to basically go about and make sure that your entities, that if somebody's looking at them, they're not going to trace it back to you or your property. And there's it's there's different ways you can do this, and so we're going to be covering how to use certain entities to obtain anonymity to to protect your assets, because I firmly believe that when you're when you're setting these structures up. Anonymity is always going to be your best defense. And I tell people that over and over again, that by having an anonymity structure, what you're doing is you're limiting your overall risk exposure because no one wants to sue the indigent defendant, the person that has no assets. And if you can put yourself in a position where you appear to not own anything, well, that's half the battle right there. Because at the end of the day, what, we're, what we want to do is we want to get our creditors Right to if they are coming after us as an attorney, there we want that 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 attorney, that plaintiff's attorney, to take our policy limits and leave us alone, and not try to go after our assets because they look at you, they run an asset search, and they say, "Wow, there's a big, huge payday right here." Um, we, we this is the type of person that that we want to sue. So what we're going to be doing then is discussing how how that works. Sorry, just checking something out here. How that works so so that you can make sure that uh, all of your assets are totally protected. All right, so let's just talk about uh, the different types of tools there are and how we go about creating anonymity uh, for those. And the, and the two primary tools that we're gonna discuss today are gonna be limited liability companies and trusts. Because really those are the only types of entities that we can use um, to create an anonymity structure. People will have come to me before and say, hey, what about a corporation? Can I set up a corporation and no one knows that I own it? Now, that doesn't work that way because with traditional corporations, you have to disclose officers and directors. And so we're really limited to those types of entities that only require certain types of information that is required to be disclosed. And we can, and we can put entities into those positions. So that's how we build our anonymity structure. So I use limited liability companies. And on the trust side, we're going to talk about land trusts. We're going to talk about statutory trusts, which are business trusts. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about something you may not have heard about before. It's called a personal, I'm just going to go put this down, PPT, personal property trust. So, so these four entities right here, combination thereof, is what I'm typically using when I'm working with clients to create anonymity around their structure. So for example, if you came to me and you said, hey, I have this rental property and I would like to put that into a structure so that if anyone were to look at title here, they're not going to see my name down here as the, the owner of the property. Now, some people say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, it's quite simple, right? I don't want people to know that I have these assets. And if somebody gets a judgment against me, I don't want the judgment to attach to the asset because that's what can happen. If I got a judgment against this individual, let's say this guy's name is Tom. I get a, a judgment against Tom. I just record the judgment in the county where Tom's property is located. And if that was a $200,000 judgment, it's going to stick to that house. And so Tom can't sell or refi without paying the judgment off. So Tom has an incentive to move that property out of his name, put it into something that his name is no longer associated with for asset, for A, for asset protection, but B, for anonymity. So for real estate, what are our options? Well, Option number one is you could create a limited liability company right here, an LLC. And typically this LLC would be set up in the state where the property is located. So if this property here was located in North Dakota, I would make this a North Dakota limited liability company. Now, when you're setting up the LLC, and I'm sure many of you have set up LLCs before, um, you'll notice that when you, when you file them and you organize the limited liability company, with the Secretary of State, you have to send in articles of organization. And most states, when you send in an article of organization, they want to know the name of the entity. So it doesn't matter what you call it, as long as you don't use your own name in the name, right? You don't call it Tom's LLC. Not a hell of a lot of anonymity there when, you, when Tom puts his own name in it. I've seen people do that before. Then you have to come up with a registered agent. Now the registered agent could be you and your personal address. And I, again, that's a huge mistake. You never want to be your own registered agent. You want to use a third party. Okay, so, so obviously if we put Tom down here and his uh, home address, anybody's going to be able to track this entity back to Tom. Uh, they want to know about a business address. 
So if you don't have a business address and it's gonna be Tom's personal address, they're gonna to wanna to know who are the members or managers of this LLC. Well, if Tom's setting up an LLC, he has to decide, do I want this to be a member managed limited liability company or a manager managed LLC? Now, if you're not familiar with the difference between the two, a manager managed LLC implies that you're gonna have a manager control the company. A member managed LLC means that the members are in control of the company. So there's two different types of management structures you can create when you form a limited liability company. What's important about this is that depending on the management structure you choose, if you choose number one, which is manager managed, then when you file your entity, many times the state will ask you to provide the manager's names and addresses. So if Tom set up a manager managed LLC, his name would go there. If he set it up as member managed and he happened to be the member, well again, his name's gonna show up there. And then last but not least, the person who submits this to the Secretary of State that does the filing, that, that, that fills out the articles of organization, the organizer is what we call them, they also have to disclose their information. So the organizer, if Tom's filling this out on his own and not having a third party do it, then his name will, get, will be listed on the organizational uh, document. So as you can see, when, when many people create LLCs, maybe they use a third party RA, so their name's not there. And maybe you have a PO box, so you're not using your home address uh, for your business entity. But if you're the member or manager, well, sure as hell your name's gonna be listed there. And if you sent in the articles, well, you're gonna get listed there. So some way, somehow, people are gonna be able to track this back to you. So when you're creating LLCs, and this goes for any type of limited liability company, if you want anonymity for your LLC that you're gonna create, I don't care, even if it's not holding real estate, it's just a business ent enterprise, then what you wanna do is structure it as follows. You know you need a North Carolina limited liability, or North Dakota, we have to set one up there. But before I set that up, I'm gonna create an LLC down here, either in Wyoming or Delaware. I'm gonna set it up there, one of those two states. And the reason why I'm choosing those two states is because neither one of those states collects any information on the members or managers of the, of the company. So when you, when you set up or we set up LLCs for our clients in say Wyoming, you have to come up with a name for the entity, right? You have to use a registered agent, that's Anderson. We serve as registered agent. I don't know how many 15, 20,000 entities we're on. So it'd be Anderson there. Um, then they want to know a business address most of the time. This is where we step in. We provide our clients a business address. So we have mail forwarding. We put that on there, uh, an address that goes on there. So people send mail, it comes to our office, then we forward it on. Other services do it as well. And then they want to know who the organizer is. And since Anderson set it up, it's Anderson's name listed there. So nowhere on this entity will you see the name Tom, my client right here. He's completely hidden. So we create this Wyoming LLC. We set it up as a manager manage with Tom up here as the manager. And he's also the member. That is our foundation to create an anonymity structure. Now from there, what we're going to do is we're going to create this North Dakota LLC. And when I say we're going to create it, again, we can't let Tom go out and set this entity up now because if he tries to set up the North, Car North Dakota LLC, it's going to screw everything up. But Anderson will go out and create it or you're using a third party. What you want to make sure that you're doing there is, again, an RA. It's not going to be Tom. It's, I'll just show you. It'll be Anderson here. Uh, the member, because we're going to make this entity here, we're going to set up as a member managed entity, not a manager managed. Manager managed is this one. The upper tiers are always going to be member managed. And the reason why is that when we file, if the state asks us to, pro to provide the member's information, well, guess who the member is going to be? The blue box. So I will provide blue box's name. We'll just call this blue box LLC. I'll put blue box LLC on the statement of information or on the actual articles of organization, wherever that information gets collected, I'll tell them. Blue Box LLC, I'll give it Blue Box LLC's address, which is a Wyoming address or a Nevada address. 
And so all that gets pushed out to the state. So you create this North Dakota limited liability company with a third party registered agent with Blue Box LLC listed as its managing member. And then you have the organizer, that is the, the company again that prepares this. In our case, it's Anderson listed there. So when someone looks at this red box here, it points them to the blue box. And if they look at the blue box, assuming they could find it, then it's going to point them to no one and they're not gonna know who's actually involved with this overall structure because the anonymity of the blue box is what's protecting everything that's built on top of it. So you can build out an anonymity structure with LLCs like this. You, know, you just keep creating red boxes and they all point down to the blue box. As you can see, it can get a little complicated, but you know when you're working with someone who understands it, we're gonna guide you through that entire process if you haven't joined me on one of my uh, real estate tax and asset protection events, I highly encourage you. I got a few more planned throughout before the end of the year. And uh, if, I, if you don't see me and I don't have the opportunity to say it, I wish you a very safe and, and happy holidays. Take care, everyone.